Oh, we have a lot to cover today. Yo, ho, ho, Don Mafia. Welcome to yet another edition of the Don Mafia Report, and you read that very lengthy title correctly. Uh, we certainly have a shit ton to talk about. We're going to start off by reflecting on the victory against the Green Bay Packers. Then we're going to discuss how Brandon Bean literally made a move during the trade deadline three minutes before its expiration in bringing Naheem Hines right to our team shipping Zach Moss off to the Colts. And then we're also going to give an update on Trey White, who was recently just activated to the roster. And then also Jordan Poyer. Should we be running around like the sky is falling? I think so, but we will get into that. Right before we dive into it, I do want to give a giant shout out to today's sponsor, and that just so happens to be Prize Picks. Prize Picks is hands down the number one platform on the face of the planet, in my opinion, when it comes into player prop bets. I literally spend hours trying to put together the perfect parlay so I can pay my bills since you guys refuse to smash the like button. Super intriguing, super user friendly, and the best part about it is is that Prize Fix is hooking up the Don Mafia. The second that you download the app, simply put in the code Don Mafia, and Prize Fix will match your initial deposit all the way up to $100. That's 100% of it. So, you're getting free money and say that you know what you're doing. You're gonna get some easy money as well. So whatever you're doing, pause this video and download Prize Picks today. Link is in the pinned comment. First story of the day. I feel like I wanted to sort of give my feedback on the overall Bills and the Packers game. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, we did send the Packers home packing. The Buffalo Bills ended up winning by 10 points. First half was absolutely immaculate. I was very nervous that the Buffalo Bills were going to come out rusty, not efficient on offense whatsoever. Um, they just so happened to save that for the second half. And so, but I really love seeing the continuous chemistry between Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. Like all receivers were absolutely running on all cylinders. Some of the throws that Josh Allen was making was just mind blowing and literally solidified and cemented the fact that we are the well-deserved number one seed in the AFC. Because I do want to point out, we ended up going up against a very, very good defense, tremendous secondary. I'm sure you guys were watching that little side story of Stephon Diggs and Jair Alexander literally at each other's throats the entire game. But it seemed like, at least for the first half, Josh Allen and the offense seemed to just be working completely effortlessly. Super great performance in the first half. Second half was a different story, and I hate to be that guy that puts a tinfoil hat on, but I find it funny that the spread was literally at 10 and a half, and any time that the Buffalo Bills were about to score again and break that opportunity, Josh Allen throws like two very uncharacteristic interceptions, makes some mistakes, and voila, the game literally ends in the Packers covering the spread. And so I'm no conspiracy theorist here, but I mean, when Vegas sees that 80% of the country is giving the Bills 10 and a half points, and then you see Josh Allen do not Josh Allen things, you have to scratch your head a little bit, right? Absolutely have to. But regardless, just really need to see some improvements right there. Even when it comes down into the best quarterbacks in the entire league, which Josh Allen is the best quarterback in the league, but even historically. And so you're not gonna play perfect each and every single snap of each and every single game. I have full confidence uh, that we're not gonna see that again for quite some time. I think that uh, we're gonna go back out to the New York Jets and then we're just gonna take care of business and completely fire on all cylinders when it comes into the offense. But overall, very good win. I think the biggest thing that impressed me was the fact that we did that against the Green Bay Packers defense and then as far as the Bills defense was concerned we just continue 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 to pressure and even if Jordan Poyer's injury is more significant than what we know now I have a feeling that the way that our front seven is performing very much have mediocre DBs out there and the pressure and the overall efficiency that our front seven has been putting out there we will be just fine the secondary scheme that McDermott and Frazier have just been putting out there is gonna save us frankly Next news story, literally about an hour ago, news just broke that the Buffalo Bills ended up trading Zach Moss and a sixth round pick. It has the opportunity of becoming a fifth round pick for Naheem Hines. Now, ESPN right now is absolutely freaking out. I'm sure that they just want clicks on their videos, etc. But they're saying that this guy is automatically the best running back on 
the roster. Now, do keep in mind, he was basically the third string running back on the Colts. Still very talented. A PFF grade of about 77.4 when it comes into pass catching capabilities. Obviously, Jonathan Taylor was the number one running back in Indy. However, Naheem Hines has been on this team for quite some time and has been an absolutely massive threat, especially when it comes down into the passing game by itself. I think that this is a great move. It's not the Josh Jacobs, it's not the Kareem Hunt that I was really hoping would happen, but I think that this is a tremendous addition. I think that he's a lot better than Zach Moss. Am I going to buy into the whole ESPN take that he's the best running back that we have in the room currently? Not necessarily. I think Devin Singletary is really hitting his stride with our new offensive line coach who has implemented a competent run blocking scheme. However, I think that this is not going to hurt us at all, especially with his ability in pass catching. I mean, his quarterback is Josh Allen. Let's be completely honest with ourselves. This is nothing but an improvement for him at least. So really, really like the move. Like I said, I wish it was a bit more of a splash play, but I think that we ended up improving by this trade deadline. Once again, Brandon Bean, a tip of the cap. Next up, Trey White has been activated to the roster. He literally had 21 days and they ended up activating him to this roster. This does not mean that he is going to be playing against the New York Jets this coming Sunday. It means that he is currently listed as day to day. In my opinion, in my opinion, I think he won't play this Sunday, but the following week we will see the first essence of Trey White. We've been missing him and super excited about that, but we're going to see Trey Day right when we need him most as we continue to move forward to that top seed in the playoffs and go from there. Last story, Jordan Poyer. We know, based off of interviews, that Poyer heard a pop in his elbow and he was taken out of the rest of the game on Sunday against the Packers. He ended up going to the hospital and getting an MRI. However, during an interview today, Sean McDermott said that they are still evaluating the injury. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm reading the writing on the wall right now, and I'm not trying to freak everybody out, but I'm going to be honest with you. I would not be surprised if this guy, best case scenario, is out for several weeks for several weeks. Worst case scenario, he's out for the season. But this is the exact same elbow that he injured in training camp where he couldn't play the entire preseason. He re-injured this. So the fact that the Bills front office is saying that they're still evaluating it even after they ended up getting the MRI, it's not looking good. We're going to be without Poyer. But like I said during my recap against the Packers, our defensive line and linebackers front seven as a whole have been operating so efficiently that in my opinion, our safeties are immaterial at this point because of how much we are getting to the quarterback. So not unless we go up against like literally a Hall of Fame offensive line, I think that the pressure that we're putting on quarterbacks so far this season is gonna make up um, for the youth that we have in the safety position. It's definitely helping that Trey is coming back. It's definitely helping that it seems like our younger DBs are really performing well. Still have Taron Johnson out there. I have a feeling we will just be fine, but my gut feeling is, is that we're not going to see Poyer for a significant amount of time, maybe even for the season. But that's just me. Don't crucify me. That's just my gut feeling right there. Dumb Mafia, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Dumb Mafia Report. Do me a favor, smash that like button. I know a lot of you guys, I look at my views. 4,000, 5,000 views, 168 like buttons smashed. You lazy f I'm just kidding. Do that. Helps out the channel tremendously. Subscribe if you have not already. And before I let you go, better always remember, let's go Buffalo.